What is good, guys, man? It is the Blue Bloods, and we're back. Listen, four straight days of live streams, man. I mean, it's been a long week here, but y'all know what we do with these spring previews, man. I couldn't do the Jackson State one without my guy, CFL, man. Y'all know him from the yeah. CFL podcast, my guy, Kobe, man. Say, say, say what's up to the stream, man. Let them know where to find you, man, and, and anything you want to say, man. Go ahead. Hey, check this out. For those of you who do not, do not know where to find me on social media, you can follow me at Kobe or C-O-B-I-O-R-R on every major um, social media platform. That's just that. I love it, man. And listen, guys, we're talking Jackson State today. And you know my guy CFL knows more about Jackson State than just about anybody out here. But, man, let's go way back, man. I, I want to get everyone's thoughts on a bunch of different topics for all these teams. So, your takeaways on the 2021 season, we know the SWAC championship that's in the background. We know they didn't end like they wanted, <clears throat> and they lost to your team, too, the South Carolina State in the Celebration Bowl. But yeah. looking back, man, year two for Coach Prime in Jackson State, what were your biggest takeaways on the season? Uh, it was filled with a lot of great moments, you know, a lot of enjoyable moments, a lot of um, historical uh, things taking place, but it ultimately ended in a disappointment. You know, it was a great season, a lot of great memories, but it's a disappointment because ultimately you stockpiled his talent to win a championship immediately and it did not happen. And, you know, maybe you could accept the way the season ended a little bit better had you lost better than what you did. It just all came apart. Uh, it seemed the last three weeks of the season. So, yeah, it was great. Uh, during it, it was a great journey, but overall, the ending it was just a straight disappointment. Man, I I'm telling you, and I mean, there was a lot of close games. You know, I thought they, you know, going into the celebration ball, I don't know how you feel. I thought this team was, I know they didn't lose a SWAT game. I thought they were a bit battle tested. They went through what they did at ULM. Mm -hmm. They won a seven to six slugfest with FAMU. That should get you a little bit battle ready. You you squeak out a tough road win against Southern. And I felt, and then the Alcorn game was tough. The PV game early was tough. Mm -hmm. I felt like, I, how, going into the Celebration Bowl, I expected them to be more ready for a big game, man. So what do you think the mindset was of the team? Like, what happened going into the Celebration Bowl, in your opinion? See, when talking to the, the players at South Carolina State, like, they told me, they peeped that Jackson State was like, they already thought they had it won. They was they was yapping at the uh, at the the banquet before the game. Uh, they came up, and we you even seen that they came off the plane. You're high off of getting the number one recruit in the country. You know you got Jeezy here in the celebrity series. I'm not going to use that as an excuse, but it definitely played a part. They thought they had that game won, no matter what anybody said. And you should not you should not take South Carolina State lightly as a team. You know I think the same motivation they had going into the uh, Alabama A and M game is the same motivation they gave South Carolina State uh, going into the Celebration Bowl, and it backfired on it. Yeah, man, I agree. I think it's a learning experience, man. I'd be shocked to see Jackson State go into a game as unfocused as they look going into South Carolina State. And you look at this recruiting class, man. You mentioned, of course, we all know what Travis Hunter is. We know what the – the national ramif ramifications of landing the number one recruit at, at an FCS program. Mm -hmm. But for you, man, looking at the totality of the class, what, what would you grade it? How do you feel about it? And who are some of the people that you're looking forward to hitting the field most? So, I mean, to put a simple fact that you got Travis and then Kevin Coleman, and, and then you went out and addressed your biggest needs. I got to give it an A, an A plus, right? Like I, I just got to, whether that's bias or whatever, you know, it's, it is what it is, but you got to give it an A plus in my opinion. I cannot wait to see a semi Moala. Like, you know, like everybody's all hyped for Travis and Kevin, and that's, we get it, but I can't wait to see that offensive line. I am genuinely interested to see how much better they can be because if that offensive line is uh, a lot better than it was last year, now you're looking at a team who looks virtually unstoppable. So, uh, semi Moala, I'm looking forward to seeing him. Um, Tavion Beasley, I want to see what he can do. He's very battle tested out of St. John's Bosco, right? Um, if I had to choose another one, Frankie Burgess, I did the video on him. I love the way he rushes the quarterback and you're looking for a guy to replace the production of James Houston. So those three guys are like the three that I cannot wait to see for this class. 
Man, listen, you know me. I always get excited about offensive line play. I'm the I'm the offensive line guy on YouTube. Man, Evan Henry and Zach Bro for me are the two guys that I'm excited for because it's very rare, man. I, and I don't know if you've ever seen it. I've definitely haven't. Where two teammates in a, at a position where chemistry is so so important go together to a place. Mm. They've played next to each other for multiple seasons now. So I think that's a big plus for Jackson State that not a lot of people highlighted is, you know, if you get if you get a wide receiver from the two wide receivers from the same school, yeah, it kind of matters, but argue, is it really going to matter in the long run? Right. But for offensive line, for a center and guard to go together, I don't think people realize how big that is in the interior of that offensive line. And then for me also, man, you, you, I think I'm pretty sure you mentioned him, the kid from Maryland, Frankie Burgess. I mean, Frankie, yeah, man, uh, listen, you did your breakdown on him. Cause I was kind of sleeping on it. I was like, all right, that's cool. They got him. And man, watching some of the highlights, his bend and the way he gets around the edge is, is, is just, it, it's, it's intense, man. It, yeah. it, it's elite. And for you, man, w looking at this class, who in this class could be, you know, a swag newcomer of the year, you know, potential to you? Mm, so Frankie's one of them. Um, I, I I didn't mention Evan Henry, but I mean, a guy who wins 80% of his matchups all last season is definitely a guy that you have to, I don't, I don't think an offensive lineman will win swag newcomer of the year, but you know, you know him too. <laughs> um, I'm really just stuck on Frankie. I'm really just stuck on Frankie, and not and that's not to say that the rest of these guys uh, can't do it because you got Jerryante Davis coming from Middle Tennessee State. I think he could be that guy. Um, but as as far as Swag Newcomer of the Year, I give it to those two. I give it to those two. Everybody else is going to be uh, great for Jackson State. Do I think they're gonna just these guys will just come up and be like the best newcomer in the Swag? No, no. So I, I go with those two. I go with Frankie. And um, the other guy I just mentioned. You know, I'm going to be interested. I don't know if he's eligible. Since Quay Davis didn't play last year, would he be eligible for Newcomer of the Year? I'm not sure how that works. Because sure if he is, man, that's a strong candidate right there if he comes yeah. in and takes it. Because, you know, I know Scotty just commented Travis, but for me, I think – if if you're if you're gonna get you know newcomer of the year, I think he's probably gonna win freshman of the year before he wins newcomer. I would imagine because mm -hmm. they want as much diversity in the in the awards. But if Quay Davis is eligible, like and it looks like they said he is, he's my pick. I mean, I think Quay Davis has the potential to be the best wide receiver on Jackson State's team. I didn't know if if Quay Davis is eligible, then I agree. I just didn't know that he would be eligible because he's been there, uh, redshirted for a year. But definitely, man, because you know. You look at well, I y'all haven't seen it, but uh Quay has sent me some of his uh his practice footage or whatever going against Nugget and the rest of these guys, and he's killing them. He's killing them. <laughs> I mean on a weekly basis. And 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 that's no disrespect, right? But they he's really killing it out there. So he's just waiting to be unleashed, man. So I can't wait to see uh if he's eligible for that award. Most definitely Quay over everybody else. Man, I, I agree with you on that one. And then it all it's really going to depend on new offensive coordinator, Brett Bartolone, and this revamped JSU offense. So, you know, he's only been an analyst. So I feel like even though we know what was run at Nevada, we know what Jackson State ran last year, I still feel like there's a little bit, you know, of a question mark on what exactly this offense is going to look like. For you, what do you want to see Jackson State's offense look like next season? Anything other than a high-flying offense is unacceptable. I'm sorry. Any anything other than you taking shots, right? Because you know you got a great defense. Anything other than a high flying offense is unacceptable. I want to see fireworks. You did not go and get all those receivers for no reason. No more of that five yard hit stuff um, in between the like. No, no. Like I need to see y'all throw it up. You have too many receivers on this roster that specializes in 50-50 ball situations. Quay Davis specializes in that. Malachi Wyman specializes in that. Travis, with his exceptional ball skills, whenever you put him at receiver, he, you know, um, what's his name? Reed, the 6'5", the 6'5 yeah. receiver, Corey Reed. You know, you you have too many talent at receiver um, to not be able to throw the ball up and, you know, make something happen. I need to see big plays all day. Uh, man, I agree. And then the other thing, you know, for me is I, I don't want I don't want to see you take the ball out of Shador's hands. Mm. I mean, I know, you know, in the SWAT championship was probably his 
only bad or the celebration bowl two at times were really is only two bad games, but you got to play to your strengths. Like you said, put the ball in a plate in your playmakers hands. I want to see some creativity too. And also want to see you put your offensive line in good situations early in the season. I don't want to see you have Shador sitting back in the pocket for five seconds and getting that offensive line absolutely destroyed. Cause right. your first game of the year, that offensive line is going to get tested because you got Isaiah Land back. You got mm -hmm. Gentle Hunt back. And those guys are a year better as well. So I want to see, I think early in the season, I think you're going to see is, is you know, you said you didn't want to see it. I do think you're going to see a little bit of short passes early just to kind of oh, get totally. that offense going. But I think you're going to work off of that, work into some like double move routes, things like that. But also don't ignore the run game either, man. I feel like there were times last year for Jackson State where they forgot they had a running back. Mm. Because, and, it, and it was because they couldn't run the ball and I know you have an interview with them coming up this weekend Tyson Alexander is back how mm. are they going to use him and are they going to use him out of the backfield because I felt like Peyton Pickett his best games are when they used him, utilized him out of the backfield similar to the Southern game so first of all very excited for Tyson Alexander to come back let me say that because I became a fan of his after that Grambling game in the spring um they have a lot more versatility at running back than people realize, right? Because you got Santi that's back. Um, you know, if you want to use the screen situations, you can do it. Caleb Jolivet, he's not even he's he's been moved specifically to running back. He's not even a slot receiver anymore. He runs a four three. Maybe you can use him out of the backfield, however you want to. Four two four three. Um, who else? JD Martin. You know, so I don't know what they're planning to do at running back. I just know that. I want Tyson to get the majority of those carries, you know, because I, I do feel like now that he's fully recovered from this injury, he can pick up where he left off in the spring. Might take him a little while longer, but I think he can. So, you know, you definitely give him a, a, a decent amount of carries and you see what he can do. But as for who to use at the backfield, they, they got a lot of options. They got a lot of options this year. They've gotten a lot, a lot faster in the backfield. Yeah, man. and I mean, even speaking of creativity, I know there was one formation, and North Dakota State ran it all the time. They would take their best wide receiver mm -hmm. and uh, Christian Watson, and they'd put him at running back, but mm -hmm. they would never hand the ball off to him. He would always either just kind of chip the DN or kind of give that body, and then he'd go out on like a on a delayed route. And I think even you could use Travis in that in that situation, especially if he puts on some weight. And so I really just want to see the creativity of what Brett Bartolome brings to this offense. So I felt like last last year at times they kind of got stuck in that rut of this is what we do well. We're just gonna we're gonna throw it at the wall, and if it isn't working, we're gonna keep throwing it at the wall. And so I, I'm interested to see what he brings, though, man. And then you know. The big schedule debate, man. And I think this has been a thing where every SWAC schedule is really getting looked at now because now they're all just about rolling out. Mm -hmm. So looking at the schedule, man, what games are you most excited for? How do you feel about the schedule overall? And, you know, what do you foresee coming this season? So, you know, when that first schedule came out, right, I was really about, about to get on Jackson State. Like, I really was because <laughs> Elaine College, like, I, you know, I, I was mad, but, you know, I'm glad that wasn't what it was. Now that I see the real schedule, I, I really do like the fact that they scheduled Campbell. You know, um, we asked for them to schedule an FCS opponent, and they did that. I, you know, I can't. There's, there's nothing else. There's nothing really more I can get from them. Um, but the games that I'm most excited about, the Orange Blossom Classic, after the way things ended last year, I got to see, you know, how how it turns out now. You add that to the fact that one of the receivers from FAMU went on Twitter and said what he said about Jackson State. Tensions is brewing. This is this is a rivalry now. They don't, you know, they feel some type of way about last year's game. They can't wait to see Jackson State again. So the Orange Blossom Classic, that's number one. Number two, Grambling, right? Just because that's a box office, you know, um, uh, Coach Prime versus Coach Hugh, right? Uh, Grambling and that sensational uh, run game that they have with the stable of backs. You know, that's a game I'm excited for. But definitely homecoming just because it intrigues me. It it, it really intrigues me. I want to see how they're going to stack up uh, versus Campbell just because, you know, I'm, I'm so used to seeing them in the swag for the majority of the time. I really want to see them versus a team that we just – well, you you know about them clearly because you boy wonder, but nobody <laughs> else know nobody else knows about. It. Like I want to see how they're gonna stack up against just a completely different um, opponent. So those are my three games for that for that schedule. 
I mean, I think everyone knows how I feel about the Campbell game. I'm going to be there. Mm -hmm. I've already, listen, I've already talked to some people in the SWAC office. I will, I am going to be in Jackson for that Campbell game. And, you know, I feel like it's a great test. You know, I think Jackson State should win that game. Let me just put that out there. But I think it's going to be a great test for Jackson State to get Mm -hmm. out of conference and see kind of what they have against one of the big South teams who's on the up, up and, you know, the up and up. Because what I think is going to happen right now, CFL, is the recruiting class for Campbell is a lot of freshmen. Mm-hmm. How many of those freshmen are going to be ready to play by, I believe, I believe it's like week six or seven is that game or somewhere yeah. around there. And how many of those guys are playing while Jackson State schedule on or roster on my hand is on is made of transfers. They're going to be ready to play. They're juniors. They're, they're seniors. Um, and so I'm interested in that Campbell game. Also, listen, I, I'm excited to see the Southern game in Jackson. That game is going to be box office as well. In my opinion, the seven game, yeah, because of how, yeah, no, I get it, I get it, right? And you know, while we're while we're throwing games in there, we can even throw Alabama A and M, you know, with their thirteen defensive backs. You know, may not realizing like, okay, I have to re up and get these four and five stars because now I want it back in blood. So you know, like we, you know, we can. It's, there's a lot of interesting games on the schedule. Uh, man, I'm telling you, listen, that game in Mobile is going to be something to see. I think Connell Maynard is motivated. I think, I think, and I think Jackson State's motivated. Everyone talks about the Alabama AM side. For me, I think Jackson State's motivated not to let them get back at them. I think they're working because, I mean, what's what's going to come back if Alabama AM could pull the upset, man? So I think there's a lot of good games on the schedule. I think I had them in my power rankings, if I'm not remember. I think they had them like fourth or fifth in my power rankings because there were some SWAC teams that had just, a gauntlet of a scout. Like they had like six straight road games, which mm. I don't even know how that even happens, but let's get to spring practice, man. What are your biggest questions for Jackson state entering these next few weeks? Number one, offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. I need to know who that starting five going to be because like I have it in my head, we can make assumptions, but I don't really know. Is Tony Gray going to keep his job? Everybody else I'm not confident but Tony Gray has a legitimate shot. Is he going to keep his job? Um, who, Evan Henry, Zach Bro, but, you know, is Christian Henderson going to end up making getting the spot on that offensive line? Um, how are they going to gel? What is their chemistry like with Shador? Uh, is Quay going to live up to the lofty expectations that we all have for him? Because he's been, and I think he will, but we still got to see it, right? He's been hyped up a lot. I need to see what he's going to do. Um, who's going to be the new security blanket for Shador? Last, last year it was Keith Corbin. We don't know if it's going to be Malachi. We don't know if it's going to be Quay. We don't know if it's going to be Corey Reed, you know? Um, the run game, who's going to take over the majority of the carries? Like, there's, there's so many things. And then you go to defense, right? Um, my biggest concern, who is going to take over that slot? that slot position last year, the, some of the biggest plays they've given up was on number three, you know, who shouldn't have been in that, in that spot anyway, but you know, who's going to take over the, uh, that, and is he going to be that much better? Can Tavion make a play for a uh, playing time, or is it going to be Kevin Wiggins who gets the spot? There's a lot. There's a, there's a lot of, um, of questions for Jackson state, but it's exciting. Man, you know, for me, it's it's also it, it's it's about the development of a few players. One, I'm excited to see the development of Shador. What is you know he had such a great year was was the freshman of the year for the FCS. What's that next step, and what does that look like? Is he a bigger leader of the offense? I want to see what that next step for Shador is. I want to see Tyson. How healthy is he? he? Came off of a major injury, mm-hmm. missed a lot of time, and we all know that there's a little bit of rust that comes with that. I want to see how he shakes that off and how he fits into the new offensive scheme. Also, who's going to replace James Houston? I want to see mm-hmm. how Niles Gaddy progressed. I want to see how you know Coinus Miller and um, Katron Evans progress in the middle of that defensive line. I want to see how these new transfers fit into that defensive line scheme, and then also who replaces Keontae. Who were you know, that linebacking duo was that they had they, they just gelled together. It felt like they complemented each other so well. Who is going to be that replacement and how are they going to mesh with what Aubrey is going to be doing on the other side? And then also for me is is Nugget. I want to see the focus that we're going to get from Nugget this year because I felt like at times last year with him missing games and not being able to start mm. and things like that. I want to see where his head is and how motivated he is to get out there and prove that he is the best corner in the FCS potentially. And so I think I want to see how Nugget progresses this this um this spring as well. 
Agreed. Agreed. Um, and you know the thing is the thing with Nugget, I don't know what it was about what it was about his situation that allowed him to not start for some of these games that he did or to come in in the second half and or just not be playing. But I mean, this is a big year for him, right? Because he's NFL talent. We're trying to see him get the money. So it's like, how is he going to come this year? Is he going to have a better year now that you have another lockdown corner on the other side? And, you know, now teams are really going to have to choose. Do I want to not throw to you or do I want to not throw to Travis? Right. So, you know, a lot more opportunities for him there. So, yeah, as far as Nugget goes, I'm with you on that. And, you know, that was a question I got, you know, a few live streams ago, and I really want to get your opinion on it. Who's going to benefit more from Nugget and Travis Hunter playing against, you know, across from each other? Is Nugget going to benefit more from (laughs) Travis or is Travis going to benefit more from Nugget? I think. That's a good question. Yeah, I bet when I got it, I had to sit here. I was like, man, I, I'd never even thought about that. That's that's a really good question. Okay. So because even though Travis is the number one recruit in the country, if I'm a coach, I would I would much rather take my chances on a freshman than a proven uh player at the college level. So I would say that maybe Nugget benefits from Travis, right? I mean, I'm sorry, but Travis benefits from Nugget because he's, you know, you're only going to get better through repetition. You're only going to get better through experience. I, I don't believe that uh, sitting on the sideline and being trained, you know, stuff until you're ready. So he's only going to get better from getting tested so many times um, until he's finally proven to teams that, hey, I'm the number one recruit for a reason. You bet not throw my way. I think he's going to, I think he's going to um, d- benefit a lot from Nugget being on the other side of the field. Uh, I like it. You see, I I went with Nugget event at first, and then I was like, you know, I think it depends on the first like three games. If yeah. Travis goes out there and just dominates FAMU, Ten- Tennessee State, and Grambling, Nugget's going to benefit in the long run because they're going to start throwing at Nugget, yeah. and they're going to start kind of spreading it out. But if <clears throat> Travis, you know, gives up some big plays or doesn't, you know, or ends up moving positions or or et cetera, I think Nugget doesn't benefit from that, and Travis will, you know. Be, be the benef- uh, beneficiary, I guess you could say. But I think it really depends, like you said. And then I saw a comment. It also depends on if they're traveling, staying to one side, the matchups in the game. I know that you know that matters too, but positional battles, man. There's a few on this team that I think are very interesting. So for you, which positional battles are you most looking forward to watching? Oh. Uh, O-line, off top, that's number one. Um, because, you know, these guys aren't going to get their jobs up easily. You know, you still got to earn it. So oh, O-line, number one. Running back, because nothing's going to be given to Tyson. Just because Tyson's back, nothing's going to be given to him. J.D. wants his carries. Like, he's ready. Um, J.D. JD Martin, we, me, um, I know Scotty has said he's, you know, he's been a fan. We've all been banging the table for him to get more carries. He's going to come out the gate swinging. Um, Caleb Jolivet, with that speed, he is going to definitely uh, make a push to get the majority of, of the carries coming out of the backfield. That's going to be interesting to see the slot position. But I think uh, what we're not talking about is the safety position, right? John Huggins and Shiloh Sanders. In my opinion, and I, oh my God, I don't mean any disrespect to Shallow, but John should have been in that position. John should have definitely been in that position. So maybe John comes harder, maybe he makes a push and beats out Shallow for the majority of the reps at safety. Uh, but that's one that I'm really keeping my eye on. Man, I, you know, I, I agree with that. Um, but for, for me, man, I think it's defensive. I think it's defensive end. You know, you have so many good options. You know, for me, if Niles develops, I feel like Niles could have that one defensive end spot locked down. But who's going to fit into the other spot? You have so many different transfers. Who's going to step up? I don't know if it's true. I heard the transfer from Florida State's not on campus. If Is that right? Because, so yeah. um, I haven't heard about him being on campus either. I've seen nothing of him. And I've asked about him. I, I haven't seen anything of him either. So I, I'm starting to think that's true as well. There's a few guys who uh, um, were committed to Jackson State that has not shown up, hasn't even sent a letter of intent. Mark Pope didn't do it. Um, there, you know, there's a couple of Keelan Kennedy, right? So I don't, I have not seen big country on campus. I have not heard about him being on campus as well. So, you know, now that he's not there, you're looking at Jason Mercier from FIU. 
Uh, Giriante, maybe he moves down, right? Uh, Frankie, of course. That's a good bad one on the other side of that line for sure. But, no, I have not heard any, anything about big country. Yeah, man. I mean, I, I heard – oh, okay. Someone said he might be a May graduate, so he might not be there until later. Um, we'll see. Or Zach Bro's graduating first. Uh, man, shout out to you, Joseph, man. We appreciate that. Um, but for me also, the offensive line, like you said, I think, you know, when you look at that guard center guard combo last season, it was just so inconsistent. Right. And I really, I, I think one, you need experience Two, you need focus and discipline. Cause I feel like, you know, with the you know, documentary, I, I mean, you could tell the coaching staff knew from episode one that the offensive line was going to be an issue all season. I mean, from the jump, they were like, okay, this is going to be a problem. We're going to have to be on these guys consistently. And mm -hmm. all season I was on the O-line coach really hard because, you know, we don't get the inside footage. But I think, I mean, he was trying to coach as hard as he could, man. He, yeah. I mean, he was trying, he's trying positive reinforcement. He's trying cussing everybody out. He's, he's, I mean, he tried literally every coaching style in the book and it just didn't, and they, they just didn't respond to you um, or, or to him. And so for me, I want to see, can you develop, develop those qualities you need in a good O-line because when you mm. list like the top five qualities you need for a good O-line, Jackson State didn't have any of them. They didn't they didn't have they didn't have chemistry. They mm. they didn't have technique. They didn't they didn't have discipline. I mean it was just all over the place for me. And then like you said, I think who replaces Warren Newman to me? That's gonna be a big question because I thought you got some good guys, but is anyone going to just bring that explosiveness that he could bring in the open space as a return guy and the in open and, and just you know screen plays short short he can turn a ten yard route into a seventy yard touchdown and he could do it in a blink of an eye. So I think that slot wide receiver spot for me is also going to be one that I'm really really interested in watching. Mm -hmm. uh, and honestly, agreed, right? Because when back when Caleb was still a wide receiver slash running back i thought for sure okay that slot is his like you know obviously uh kevin coleman is gonna get his as well he's gonna get his reps but that slot is caleb joe Levetz. he runs a like a four two you feel me how do you not how do you not compare him to warren right so in the return game most definitely he's gonna be deadly but now that they move him specifically to running back you're right who who gets that who gets that position so i'm with you on that i'm i'm just as clueless on on, on the slot receiver position as you are yeah, and I mean, if Kevin Coleman develops, I know he's going to be there, like a lot of the comments say. But mm -hmm. this is a this is a topic that I've heard a few people talk about and a few people question is, you know, Travis Hunter played both ways, and I've I saw you know one of the top two four seven guys say mm -hmm. he was going to be the number one wide receiver in the class and the number one DB in the class, just depending on whatever he wanted to play. I mean, he was that good. And so for you, man, looking at Travis Hunter's skill set, what this team needs. How do you think Jackson State should use Travis Hunter moving forward? So, you know what? I might be in the minority when I say this, right? I absolutely love him at wide receiver. I do. I want him at corner, but I absolutely love him at wide receiver. I mean, we forget this is a kid who put up 3,600 receiving yards and 46 touchdowns in his high school career at the receiver position. The way he runs routes, it's pretty to watch, right? Um, you know, the way he's able to do with the double move, the head fakes, like he he has all the nuances of the route runner position down. Um, and then, of course, his great ball skills. I think one of his catches went viral uh, versus that that high school in Vegas, right, that mm -hmm. big school. Um went viral because he just straight up just mossed the kid. Um, so I would love to see him at receiver. I think you give him reps at receiver, but you, you got to put him at DB. I want a lockdown field with him and Nugget. Like, I, I want that over everything else. You know, you know, I'm with you on like he's probably better. I, I would say just like marginal, like barely better at wide receiver because I mean he's going to be good wherever you put him. But for me, I feel like you have a bigger need at defensive back than mm -hmm. you do wide receiver. Like, yeah, like I'm, yeah, like it's Scotty's right. Like I think he's a five star wide receiver, four star corner type guy, but. I think you could use a four-star corner over a five-star wide receiver right now because you still got Malachi, you still got Quay. Like you have so many weapons on offense already that I feel like if you don't put them on defense, who is the true number two corner that you're going to trust to lock down the side of the field? Exactly. I I don't think I mean you have options, but we have any, options. 
Yeah, but is anybody going to be a definite where you're like, okay, no one's going to be able to throw on us? I don't think so. I don't think so. I know Randall Haney is back. Um, I I don't really I don't really have the same confidence in Randall. Um, but he's a he's a good player. Don't really have the same confidence in him. There's nobody um, under Nugget and Travis who I really have like just sure confidence in that he's going to be locked down no matter what. I like them all, but I don't. I don't have the same confidence as the guys below. So yeah, he Travis definitely needs to stay at uh, DB. So okay, so the special teams debate for me, I don't think you should play special teams. I'm sorry, you cannot risk no. Travis Hunter getting hurt. Uh uh-uh. uh, for what? For exactly. What? For exactly. what? <laughs> <laughs> like no, why? Why would he be on kick return? To put? That's that's stupid to me. No, like he doesn't. His speed isn't bad, but he doesn't have like blazing speed, right? Like I don't. I don't look at Travis and think, oh, he's a special team killer. No, that's why you have Caleb. That's why you have Kevin Coleman. That's why you have Isaiah Bowden. You know, I, that's why you have Ala Brown. Use those guys. He doesn't need to be on special teams. At that point, you're just doing too much, you know? Hey, that, that's me. I mean, I'm like, man, you're going to have to give that kid an oxygen mask every time he hits the sidelines because he's going to be playing – too much, but I mean, I agree with some of these comments. They said, you know, every snap on defense and then have, you know, certain plays, certain formations certain for him on offense. Yeah. I think 30 plays, 20 to mm. 30 plays, depending on, you know, the situation. Or if you just play a team that is just, dom- you know, you can't get a play open, send them in for like a spark plug type play where, you know, he like, I mean, it's just like in basketball. You got you got Kevin Durant, give mm. the ball to him and say, go make me a play and he's going to make it happen. I think you right. can use him in that type of role, but Potential breakout players, man. We had so many options last year. James Houston came out of nowhere. Aubrey had a breakout season. For mm-hmm. you, for you this year, who are your breakout players for Jackson State? All right. So I like I want to say somebody at the running back position, but you, it's just so uncertain on the carries that they'll get. Um, so Quay, Quay, Quay. That's my number one. Quay is going to break out. Um, he is going to live up to the expectations that we have for him. He is going to be the breakout guy on defense, though. On defense, I'm I'm looking at Jerryonte Davis. I'm not gonna lie. I really like his game. I really like his game. Um, and the reason being is because he's a guy whose production just continuously goes up. Like every school that he went to, every level of play uh, that he that he's. Uh, that he's played at his production has always went up i think he can be a staple uh for that defense he might not be the star he's not he might not be the james Houston, but i think he's gonna be um a breakout guy for that jackson state defense so those are my two man i like it you know for me i, I know i think quay quay's quay's an easy one i think everyone watching loves quay everyone knows mm-hmm. what he is and what he could have been last year if he could have came on the field but i see it in the comments they kind of took mine cam i think cam Playing, you know, playing on that defense is going to be next level, man. I mean, I saw at times last year, I thought he was one of the better, you know, DBs back there in terms of just making plays happen. So I really want to see what he does. And then also for me, I think Evan Henry's a first team all swag offensive lineman pick. And I, I know that's saying a lot, especially because there's some really good swag offensive linemen coming back. Southerns has like three that are coming back. You got, um, Evans at UAPB coming back. He's a four-time first-team All-American at UAPB, which is unheard of. You got some guys at FAMU who are coming back, but for me, I, I personally think he's a first-team All-SWAT guy. So I think I think Evan Henry is a potential breakout player with Zach Bro being right behind him. And you know, right here, man, I, this is a good question: Who takes number twelve if Travis plays defense? I've heard that Travis is going to have number twelve. And Cam didn't mind giving it up. That's what I've heard. That's what I've heard. Um, I don't know though. I, I do feel like I do feel like Cam wouldn't mind giving it up to Travis. Maybe they have some type of battle in practice to uh some kind some kind of competition to see who comes up with it, knowing that kind of program. But no, I, I think may, maybe he does give it to the Travis and maybe he takes like the honey badges number since that is his comparison from a lot of people. Yeah, a lot of people, number seven. yeah, a lot of people saying he's wearing number seven. Some other people are saying that he, he needs to keep 12. But, man, when you're the number one recruit in the country, it's, it's kind of tough to yeah. deny that kid his number, man. But before we open the call lines, man, last last topic before we get some callers' opinions, what are your way too early expectations for Jackson State, man? I, no one's going to hold you to them, but as of right now, how do you feel about the season? Celebration Bowl. Again, part two. JSU versus State Part 2. 
I've said it. I called it last year. I'm gonna call it again. It's a part two. Like that's that's what I think is gonna happen. I'm I'm hey, say what you y'all can roast me in the comments. I don't care, bro. Part two. I'm like it's gonna happen. That's that's my <laughs> prediction. No, I mean I agree with listen, I, I think when you know we can stretch it to the MEAC a bit. I think South Carolina State's the best team in the MEAC. Mm -hmm. I mean but you know, I think Norfolk's on their way. I think they they got a lot of talent, and they're they're on their way up. And and I, but I just think South Carolina State, with what they're returning and their recruiting class, is uh, their recruiting class was underrated. I'll just say that. Listen, man, there I went is. back and looked at some of them, and, and listen, it is it is. <laughs> and you said, and part two, you're still not going to pick a team. I'm not. I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> no, don't ask me that. Like, no. Nah. I'm not. I'm not gonna pick a team. No, I'm not. I'm not doing it. So, so the question is, you know, a lot of people are saying that undefeated is is the is their is their expectation for you. Is the season a disappointment if Jack State doesn't go undefeated? If they win the Celebration Bowl, absolutely not. Like if they still find a way to get to the Celebration Bowl and win it, no. Um, I think if you want to be, if you want to be like nitpicky, if you want to, you know. We, we look at them to be a perfect team because of the talent that they brought in. Um, but, no, I don't if, – if they win the Celebration Bowl, it's not enough to get there. If they have to win it. If they win it, no, it's, it's not – I wouldn't look at them as, like, a disappointment or anything like that, as long as they bring on the hardware. I might, I might, I might squint my eye at them a little bit, like, how do you not, how do you not go undefeated? But, no, it, it's not going to be a disappointment. <laughs> uh, that, that's fair enough and for me i think it's a swag I, you know i think the celebration bowl is like a weird it's, it's it's like saying that you know your expectation is just running through the national championship i think that's a bit tough for me i think swag championship getting to the celebration bowl and we'll see who gets there but i think as long as jackson state wins the swag i think that's a solid year for them man i think they're the best team right now top to bottom in the swag and mm -hmm. you should go out there and win you a swag championship because for me for me see if Jackson State gets to host the SWAC championship, there is no reason you should lose that game in Jackson. Oh, of course not. Of course not. I, I'm, I'm sorry, man. Like, listen, you can't have 65,000 and get beat in, in, in that stadium, man. I, I just, I can't see it. So, for you, I got asked this last night, man. And then we'll take our first caller here. I know people are already in the weight room. You guys can call in. Number is in the top right. But for you, should the SWAC go to a neutral site game for the SWAC championship? Honestly, I like it the way it is. I really do like it the way it is. I think, you know, throughout the season, that, like just because we see it with every other major conference, we think that should be uh, how it is all across the board. I actually think that if you've earned the right, right, if you run through this way and you earn the right to have the game at your stadium – Keep it at your stadium. Like, nah, if 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 you if I ran through the swag, I've done everything that I was supposed to do. I made it at the gauntlet. Yes, I want the game in my home field. I've earned that. I've earned it. So nah, I like it. I think it, you know, it's it goes against the grain of what we see now in college football. Keep it. Everybody doesn't need to be on the same level with that neutral site stuff. Plus, now you put you're making it depending on where the game would be held, you're making it harder on fans with traveling and everything like that. Keep it where it is. I like it, man. Hey, I got asked about that, and I, I never thought about it. I was like, maybe? I mean, it, I guess it depends, but, you know, I, I agree with a lot of the comments. It meant, listen, if you if you go through the SWAC and you're undefeated, you deserve that game, in, you know, yeah. in your home stadium, man. But let me get these callers going. I know we already got some people waiting. Caller, you're live. Hello? Hey, you're live. Can you hear me? Yeah. See, you hear him? Mm, I can't hear him. Well, hang on. All right, go ahead, man. Can, can, you, can, you, can you hear him now? Mm, nah, I can't. No. Nah, um, if you want to. Uh, hang on. We can use mine if you want to. Maybe, yeah, that works, man. Yeah, that works. Be able to hear it, like, hold on. Yeah. All right, man. Hang on. We're going. <clears throat> Take his. Hold on. Yeah, it's low. I must say they they were commenting. They can barely hear him too. Most FCS conferences don't have games at neutral sites until the playoffs. He said, "My commissioner." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> uh, let me set mine up. Uh, All right, let's see. I'm going to type it in a banner. You are the only participant in the conference. All right, what's the number? All right, hold on. Let me see. Let me see. Oh, I like this comment. Mr. Gaddy said, we used to play it in Houston. It became expensive for fans to go to the SWAT championship and the Celebration Bowl and got that Power 5 money. Which is exactly what, like, yeah, keep it home, bro. Like, no need to make it harder on everybody who wants to come and watch the game. All participants are muted, and they can unmute themselves. All right, hold on. Call in number 609-663-5620. All right. All right, guys. Call, call in number is on the banner, and you can call in now. Uh, so everyone in the weight room, leave that one and go to this weight room. What is Jackson's office going to look like this year? All right, man. How do you feel about this comment? They said, do not overlook Valley in Jackson State. Nobody should overlook Valley. Nobody should overlook Valley. Oh, I think we got a caller. All right, caller, you live. Hello? Y'all can hear me? Yeah, you can yeah. hear me good? Yeah, we good now. Yeah, we can hear you. Hey, man, this your boy, Timothy Green. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Tim? Yeah, man, just want to appreciate y'all, man. What y'all doing, man? Me personally, I went to J State from 05 to 2010. Played in the band. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Wanted to come on here and show y'all some love. I be on Scotty on him some love. My boy Blue, the the boy Wonder. Yeah, <laughs> fair showing love, man. Y'all, I appreciate what y'all doing, bro. I appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? But what I want to say is, tell your people who watch it, can we get these likes up? Get these likes up for these boys putting in this work. Get the likes up, get them up, get them up, get them up. That's what I want to say. And for as far as Jackson State, man, I think they're going to do their thing, really. But I, th I think they might take a hit with, like, one or two teams this year. I don't think they're going undefeated, even though I would like for them to. Mm. If they do, cool. Who I'm looking out for is Southern. Because no matter what the record is, it's always a rivalry game, bro. I went to Jackson State, all my family. I grew up Southern. All my family went to Southern. It don't matter what the rest is. It's always a rivalry down to the wire, almost type of game. With stuff. So that's what I'm looking for. And I'm looking for, like, all, surprisingly, I'm looking for, like, all corn or valley, <clears throat> you know, to, to make some noise. So I don't know who it's going to be. I think all the games going to be competitive. I want Jackson State to do their thing, but we'll see. But, hey, appreciate y'all, man. Hey, y'all who watching, ain't no way for all these people be watching and the likes ain't up. Get the likes up. <laughs> I'm going to highlight y'all. All right, appreciate it, man. Thank that, you. Man. All right, let me see. He said Jackson State two games. That's a that's a no for me, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Ford, you love. Hey. How y'all doing? Let me turn this thing down. Yes, how you doing, Mr. Boyd? Okay, okay, let me get started. First of all, I want to say to the people who organized the SWAC basketball tournament, you did a piss poor job. <laughs> and uh, if you need some help, you can call me. I can help you. Let me say this here. They played in the Gene Bartow Center, a beautiful arena in Birmingham, Alabama, and you had 776 fans for the championship game. 
you should have had 3,000 seniors from them Birmingham and Jefferson County High School at the game. Mm. This don't make no sense. So I'm going to say this again to the SWAT people. If you need some help with the tournament, I can help you. Or just go and copy what they do in the CIAA. Okay? This was ridiculous. Okay, you had a semifinal day. You had two games early and two games late. That don't make no sense. The people in Birmingham are working during the early part of the day. That doesn't make no sense. So I'm going to say this again. You people in the swag office, now I strip, I'm saying whoever put that darn gone tournament together needs to do better. That's what I'm saying. I ain't taking no cool shots at the commission. I told you once before, that man does a great job, but they need to do better than what they did this year. You had an undefeated Jackson State team in it. You had Texas Southern, who wins uh, the play-in game. You, they should play in front of more than 776 fans. That don't make no sense. So I'm saying to the people who put together that basketball tournament for the SWAC, you, this is unacceptable. you got to do a better job. Now, I'm tired of talking about that. Okay, let me go on right here. Listen, ain't but one question mark with Jackson State. That's offensive line. That ain't, that's, all, that's the only question mark they got. Uh, one of the things I have been doing – since the, the guy's name is Brett Bartolome. What, what, is that right, Blue? What's that guy's name? Yeah, I think it's Brett Bartolone or Brett Bartoloni. I, I've heard both, but I think it's Bartolone. I went back and looked at Nevada coach um, Mike Norvell. Hell, Mommy's son is the offense coordinator. Guys, let me tell you something. He's going to bring that to Jackson State. Baby, it's all over for all of us. I saw that offense. Now, one of the things I didn't like last year with uh, – with uh, Texas State was they didn't do enough sprint outs and roll outs and naked boots with Shadua. This guy's going to do it. If, if he's going to be like uh, Nevada and, and going to be like Mike Leach and them who was out at Washington State, they're going to sprint him. And that's what I like. I like a quarterback who can bootleg. I like a quarterback who can um, um, roll out, sprint out. I, I really like that. I, I hope they will implement that into the offense. But the number one question, guys, is uh, offensive line. Now, this whole thing about Nugget, Nugget is supposed to be on the left. He should be the left corner. <clears throat> that kid you're talking about, uh, Hunter, should be at the right corner. That other kid y'all talking about, that John Huggins guy, that guy's a pro. I've watched him. John Huggins can play in the linebacker position. John Huggins can play in the secondary. This guy, John Huggins is a pro. And y'all say what y'all want. John Huggins is a pro. Okay. Now, this is what I didn't understand all tonight. Y'all was talking about some of Jackson State's top games. Have y'all forgotten Jackson State goes to Montgomery this year and it's Alabama State's homecoming? Do you know that that's going to be 30, 35,000? That's going to be a sellout. Then you're talking about Jackson State got to go to Alcorn on November the 19th, the Soul Bowl. Do you know they're going to set a new attendance record at Alcorn? It's gonna be it's, it's gonna be totally sold out, okay. Um, let me see. I think that's about all I had, guys. Yeah, but I don't want to hog up the phone. But Blue, you uh, see up there? Y'all got anything for me? Y'all want to ask me anything? Uh, not not at this time, Mister Ford. Yeah, thanks for the call, Mister Ford. Okay. All right, thanks for calling. Okay. In. Have a good night. Okay. All right. Hey Blue, I don't know about you, bro, but I'm still stuck on the Bartoloni comment. Like, yeah. hey, Mister Ford, you funny for that. <laughs> oh, hold on, we got another caller. All right, caller, you live. Hey CFL, what's going hey, on with you? What's going on? Nah, nah, it was good with you. Hey man, hey man, look, it's like it's right here. Uh, I don't know if y'all heard or not. Uh, what's going on, Blue? What's going on, man? Uh, I, I don't know if y'all heard or not. Uh, you know Byron Allen, uh, he's going to be showing. You know he's teaming up with the Swag. He's going to be uh, showing the Swag games on, on his media service. Uh, I think I think that's that's going to be that's going to be pretty cool, pretty hot right there. And uh, I guess one question: How y'all feel about? Uh, JSU ladies uh, going up against LSU. So what you know? What you what you think the key for for Jackson State winning that? I, I, well, really, I, I don't think they're going to win. I'm 
hoping they're gonna win. But uh, what, what you think, though? All right, so I'll be the first to admit I have not watched basketball a lot this year, so I definitely can't give you like a full-on pro synopsis. But I can say this, right? Amisha is very talented. She's going to have to have the game of her life to overcome LSU. Like she needs to have a big game. She can't like she has to be she has to be the catalyst for that team, right? They have to shoot well, you got to rebound well, like just all the basic things. Um, that you need to do to win a basketball game, you're going to have to do. This is win or go home. So the mentality needs to be do not hold anything back, right? Play your game. Do not play scared because of who LSU is, right? You play to your strengths. You play. You stay true to you. You don't hold anything back. And regardless of what the score is um, at, the end of the, at the end of the day, Maybe you know, maybe you're not as upset as you would be. So I, I don't know. I don't know if they'll upset LSU or not. Um, because like I said, I haven't watched much basketball games, but you know, Amisha's gonna have to have the game of her life, and you know, you just can't hold anything back. You have to play JSU basketball at its best. Yeah, uh, I mean, yeah, I'm gonna admit I haven't watched many games. I know I saw Scotty's um breakdown. I mean, I'm just gonna keep it real. I mean, I've watched I've, I've watched a little bit of LSU because my friend lives in Baton Rouge. Listen. JSU is going to have to play the best game that they've played in probably five years. And LSU is going to have to play like uh, one of their worst because Ken Malarkey uh, or Kim Malarkey is going to have that team playing just out of their mind. There's a reason why she's a multiple time national champion. I, I would give it a very low percentage that JSU comes out there with a win, but they're going to have to play out of their minds to even have a chance at that one. I agree. I, I, I totally agree. Now, now I know like, Next year, they uh, they they have a uh, they have a commit from I think her name is Angel Jackson from uh, USC, and she's like six five. Yeah, so I think I think yeah yeah, and I've taken a look at some of her stuff, and yes, yeah, she's gonna be a major problem. Hey, Carl, Carl, you kind of you you're breaking up. Appreciate you, man. I appreciate the call, man. <laughs> now, listen, I'm going to be honest with you, Deputy. Um, this this thing ain't been shaved since I was like 18. It ain't being shaved for for that. Just hey, you know. beards. Shave, hey. Uh, uh, mm -mm. <laughs> uh -uh. I, I would. I, I'm tempted, but no. Nah, I ain't going to lie to you. Hey, Carly, you live. Talk to me. Hey, what's going on, guys? I love what you guys are doing. Um, I just got to say with the JSU, LSU, this is Randy, by the way. I, I, I spoke with you um, uh, a couple weeks ago, Koei. Uh, uh, but I love what you guys are doing. Um, I just want to say JSU, LSU. The JSU, and, and first of all, I know Scotty's in the chat, so I'm going to bring him up. Scotty did an amazing job in terms of the uh, explanation and, you know, going into the details. Just got to make them up on that. Um, I'll say the JSU team this year is better and deeper than the JSU team last year, right? Um, they're a lot deeper and they are a lot more, what's the word I want to say? Uh, like, like they have more people that can contribute. Um, when compared to last year, right? So you have more weapons. And the LSU team is not better than the Baylor team that GSU played last year, right? Um, I know Scotty said this, and I, and, I, and I did my homework on this. Both teams are not good three-point shooters. So I think the key for GSU comes down to this. Points in the paint, which means Amisha got to do what she got to do, right? Um, so we got points in the paint, controlling the boards, 
Um, JSU is fourth in the nation, believe it or not, when it comes to rebounding. Fourth in the nation. And they're fourth in the nation in points per game as well. So uh, points in the paint, yes, you got to win that. Controlling the, re- the board because because both teams are not a good shooting team. So second chance points is, will be key. And controlling the board for that will be super important. they got to limit their turnovers, right? Because, you know, they have a couple of girls that like to do a little bit too much and they turn the ball over a little bit. they got to limit the turnovers. Get all that nervousness out, and they got to hit their free throws. Um, and obviously, Amisha has to stay out of foul trouble because I think Amisha's going to be able to eat on these things. She has to hit the free throws. She's, she's, I think she's 67% this year. Last year, she was around 70%. So we need to get that closer to 80% or, or a little bit more in, in the, for, the, for this game. So if they can do those four things, Control the um the paint, um, win in the paint, control the boards, make free throws, limit the turnovers. Um, I think they have a real great, great shot to win the game. Don't get me wrong. LSU got some balls now. That girl, I forgot her name, but that girl, um, not Morris, but the other one, the other guard, she's a beast. I'm not sure if Morris is going to be playing because I know Murky, uh, uh, Moki said that she hasn't really been practicing with the team and, and, and so on and so forth, but I'm sure they may try to have her go. She's the second leading scorer, uh, Morris. Um, so let's see what happens. And since JSU is a deeper team than LSU, they have to put a lot of pressure and they got to play a lot more energy. Call it. They're going to have Call it. bodies off of, the, uh, Call it. off of the bench. But that's it, though. But that's it. But that's my, that's my thing. I know I've been rambling, but that's my thing. Okay. What do you guys got to say? You got any football questions? Um, no, nah, not really. Um, I mean, we spoke, me and you spoke about football, um, and, and, and I know Blue and me, you spoke about football as well. Um, uh, I'm excited to see what goes on this Saturday. I mean, yeah, this Saturday with the, with the women's basketball. Um, we'll have more time to play football. I just want to give the ladies, the ladies Tigers they love right now. We'll have more time for me. To kind of focus on the football, but yeah, I just want to give the, I just want to get the women some love, especially since it's Women's uh, History Month and everything. All right, man, appreciate you. All right, um, quick, quick announcement. Listen, bro, me, listen, Scotty, Scotty can handle the women's basketball. Me and C are football dudes. That's like that's it. That's, that's it. Listen, that's, that, it. that's it. So football questions only from here on. That's it. Like, I don't got nothing for you. All right. So we got to call it from Little Rock. Hey, call you live. What's up, y'all? This is Johnson. What's up, Blue? What's up, Cody? What's going What's on? Up? Not much, man. Uh, I got a question for each of y'all. I'm going to start with Blue. Blue, so who do you think, personnel-wise, because, like, I don't want nobody really that stay at stage. But what team in the swag do, if, do you think has the best chance of beating JSU? Like, personnel-wise, matchup. Uh, Jimmy and Joe, what team in the swag this coming up year can match up with JSU? Um, you know, I'll, I'll say this: I don't think anyone matches up position for position that you know as well. I mean, I still think Jack State's the most talented team in the SWAC right now, but I mean, really and truly, it's week one. I think if you're going to get Jackson State, it's got to be early. And I think when you look at what FAMU has coming back with Isaiah Land, Gentle Hunt, they got some guys at corner coming back. They got some offensive linemen coming back as well, along with Terrell Jennings and um, I'm, I, I believe McLeod at running back as well. So I think for me, it's FAMU. And then I think a close third – Man, I think you could put Alabama A and M or maybe Grambling, but right now I think I'm going to give FAMU the best the best shot as of right now because along with that, you, they got an experienced quarterback. Or if even if you put Musa in there, he's probably a, he's probably one of the more talented quarterbacks in the SWAC. So I like FAMU to probably be the team that matches up best with Jackson State. Did, did FAMU return their starting quarterback? Yes, Rashawn McKay's coming back. Okay. All right, well, I can see that. I kind of figured it would be found. Um, but, you know, we'll just see how it goes. All right, Cody, I got my question for you. Yes, sir. With that type of defensive, with that type of defensive back, backfield and dance, you got this, your number one corner in the nation. We got Nuggets, a couple other guys that can hold the, swap, the, uh, the fly position down. How 
how is Salo not the defensive breakout player of the year? How how is he not going to play? He can just roam the field. He's going to have to work about covering now. He, everybody, look that's at why. That's why. Play. That's you, you just said. That's exactly why he needs to get better in coverage. Until he does that, he is nowhere near that conversation for uh, swag new not newcomer, but the uh, the most. Whatever that award is, because you, you like got me started. So he has to get better in coverage, point blank, period. Until he does that, I'm not putting his name in that conversation. I'm not saying he's trash. I'm not saying he's sorry. But, I mean, when you look up the plays that he gave up last year, it shouldn't have happened. Like, that was fully on him. He has to get better at that. So, until he does that, like, his, his name ain't in it. With all due respect to him, his name is not in that conversation. All right. Well, hey, fellas, thanks for taking my call, man. I'm Jonathan. Jonathan, love y'all. Be seeing me down in the, in, in the chat, man. I call in. I'll, I'm, I'm going to start calling in more often. Appreciate you, man. Thank you. No problem. All right, Carla, you live. Hey, hello? Yes, sir. All right. Well, I, got, I got two questions. Oh. Uh, all right, I'm going to get started first on JSU and FAMU. So, so a lot of people have been saying, well, FAMU have a game before JSU, right, versus uh, who? North Carolina. All right, North Carolina. A lot of people have been saying that's a, that's a bad thing. A lot of people are saying that's a good thing. Do you all think that's an advantage for them going into the JSU week? No. No, not at all. And why is that? Uh, why is I, it disadvantage? I mean, for me, I think you look at PV. PV was rolling through the season. They go down to College Station to play Texas A&M. Everybody gets hurt. They get destroyed. It's demoralizing, and their their season was never the same after that. And for me, when you start out the season with that, I mean, listen, I don't think FAMU is going to win that game. I'll just put that out there. Even though I'm riding with FAMU this year, you know, the whole bandwagon thing, they're not beating UNC. But in terms of injury and, and morale and just overall, why are you scheduling that game before your biggest game of the year? I'm going to question it you know, for the end of time. Why was that game, you know, maybe schedule it after and just, you know, play your backups or whatever in that game. But I don't think that's a game that FAMU expects to win. And um, I just don't understand why you would put that game before your most important game of the season. Same. Like, that was that was pretty much right. self-sabotage, bro. All right. Um, and do we all think that the slack – overall is like a stronger conference compared to like uh, five years five years ago. Do you think the swag is progressing as far as like in the FCS conference hierarchy and something? Do you think the swag is progressing? With the, with the volume of talent that they're getting, yes. And I don't see how you can, you know, say for other for all the teams. Yeah, for all the teams, not just Jackson State, for all the teams, right? Like, they're they're definitely trending in the right direction with the amount of talent that they're bringing in, at the volume that they're bringing in. The question becomes now, are you going to develop these kids into their best selves? And also, are you going to go out, go outside of your community and play these other schools to see exactly where you stack up on a more consistent basis? But, yeah, they're trending in the right direction for sure. Yeah, I mean, I think when you look, I mean, Texas Southern with Andrew Body is trending upwards. Valley under Dancy trending upwards. Alabama A&M brought in the most transfers of any school in the country. What Jackson State is doing, landed the number one recruit in the country. FAMU was in the running for multiple four stars this year. And that, and, you know, with Willie Simmons, that, that program is trending in the right direction. Alabama State, even though we question their hire, they they did a good good job in recruiting this year, and I think they're they're primed to take a step forward as well. So you're looking at everybody, and I think overall, when you if you compare the SWAC now to the SWAC, you know, just a few years ago or even last year, I think it all it took a large step forward, in my opinion. All right, all right, guys, thank you. Hey, Appreciate thank you, you man. Call. I think we have one call left. Carla, you're live. Hello. How you doing? Oh, is that me? 
Yes, 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 yes you. <laughs> what? I just this day from North Dakota. What up, Blue? What's up, man? Yeah, I love all the basketball talk. It was really good. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mother of fuck. Hey, anyways, I like the Celebration Bowl rematch part two. What would be the top five excuses for Jackson State fucking up? <laughs> the top five excuses? Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. There wouldn't be any excuses. If they mess up. It's on them. Like there, there's, there's no excuses for last year. To be honest with you, they just got overly cocky. Um, but no, nah, like there's no excuses at all. Yeah, I mean, I, I think if you lose twice in a row to the same team, definitely, um, you're out of excuses at that point. Because I mean, last year you can argue injuries, you could argue, you know, whatever. But I don't think you can have any excuses two years in a row, man. Did he leave? I think so. <laughs> hey, that was <laughs> that was wow, man. Dave. I don't know who he is, but you're blowing nah, out. No, nah, that's Dave, man. That, that dude came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> he said top five excuses. Oh, uh, that sounded like a skit. I ain't gonna lie to you. Oh man. But guys, man, listen, we'll take calls for probably about another 10, 15 minutes, man, to get y'all's calls in, and then me and C gonna run out of here. Script. Yo, what's good? What's good, bro? What's good, good man? Hey, no, man. I uh, love watching what y'all are doing, man. Absolutely. You know, the boy wonder. The boy, boy CFL. All right, so listen. <laughs> shout, out to, shout out to Dave from North Dakota. I love that top five excuses. That was hilarious. Um, My question, it goes back to what the guy said about matching up. What do you feel about? And this is kind of for UCFL and Blues. You know, you can chime in as well. If you give Dooley an upgrade at talent, because the scheme was there. We all saw that the scheme was there to beat Jackson State. They just couldn't find – they didn't have a quarterback to hit water if he fell out of a boat in that game. Mm. How do you not put Southern in a position that they can't compete – they can compete with Jackson State? Um, I mean, in terms of, you know, for Southern and how it's going to fit Dooley's scheme, the, the the one and two things I need to see is, a, one, a quarterback who could who is consistent enough to throw the football in the pocket. Because, listen, Ladarius Skelton and Bubba, they had their moments, but they were more athletes than they were true, you know, can throw the They didn't have an arm like a Jawan Pass, to be honest, in terms of strength or anything. I think Jawan Pass was even more accurate than either one of them were. And wow. for me, I need to see wide receivers, man. Listen, you lose Marquise McClain, who arguably was your most talented wide receiver. Are you going to have the the depth at the skill positions that you did in that PV system where they were the most balanced team in the SWAC? So I need to see, are you going to have playmakers on the outside and are you going to have a quarterback who's consistent enough and limits his turnovers They can sit in the pocket and make those big throws I think that those are the two things that if you give Dooley that, Southern's going to be a problem. And I'll give you that. If 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 Dooley has that, he's going to be hard to beat at Southern. And, like, for me, it's really just – for me, it's just the quarterback. That's my main concern. Like, if he if he's able to – can he be able to make the throws, right, uh, that Jawan wasn't able to make in the swag championship? If, if you have a decent quarterback, then – you know, my perception of Southern changes, but until I know that they have one, I can't really give it to them right now just because of the personnel that Jackson State has on their team. But they get if they get a decent quarterback, I'm looking at this game a different way. I'm still giving it to Jackson, but I'm looking at Southern differently than I do now. Well, wouldn't okay, so see if, if, if that's your if that if we're going down that road, wouldn't you put the offensive line of Jackson State in that same boat? You can't. You gave them an A plus, but mm. you don't know anything about what they fight. And I know. Listen, you're watching practice like I'm watching practice. Mm. But at the end of the day, you we still, you know, what I'm saying we still don't know when the when the rubber meets the road what they're going to look like. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. if you're gonna if you're gonna have that same premise with Southern, and we know that Dooley can recruit talent. You know what I'm saying? You saw the talent at PV. You saw the running backs at PV. So you assume he can do the same thing. Being from Louisiana, mm. so if if I if you give if you give Jackson State uh, an A for an offensive line that we have no idea what they're going to do, well, I got to give Southern the best shot to beat Jackson State because they had the best scheme to do it. I mean, you know, Dooley Dooley having the best scheme to do it. You well, get what I'm saying? Yeah. Well, see, 
when it comes to that offensive line for Jackson State, right, this isn't like last year's offensive line uh, recruits where, you know, these guys just came from schools, but they really didn't have production for you to look at. Simi has production at the Pac-12 level. You know, he's faced the Kayvon Thibodeaux, a top five, you know, uh, draft prospect in the NFL. You know, so I have more confidence in him naturally. Evan Henry winning 80% of his matchups uh, in him with the chemistry with Zach Bro. I, ha- I have confidence in those three. And because Jackson State's offensive line was – bottom of the barrel to me you cannot get any worse than that you have like there's only there's nowhere to go but up so that's why like i have a little bit more uh confidence in giving jackson state the a plus because of that offensive line because there are guys who they brought in that we know for a fact they had production at you know at at the highest level of college football so i expect it like yeah you're right we don't know you know just because what they've done at their other schools, we don't know. Everybody isn't going to hit. They might come to the swag and just be trash, right? But because of what they've done, and they have um, a proven amount of a proven amount of uh, production at the FBS level, I'm I'm more naturally inclined to give it to them, um, and that's why I'm so much I'm so much more confident in giving them the A plus. All right, my last statement is for both of you guys. I'm gonna head on out. Um, I'm gonna hang up. If if the if Jackson State goes undefeated in the SWAC. Is that an indictment on the SWAC, or is that just how good Jackson State is? And I'll get off and y'all answer. Hmm. I think it's I think it's how good Jackson State is. I I really think that'll be uh, just how good Jackson State is. And I mean, you the recruiting class that they have, you know, all you really needed to do was plug in a few holes and just go right like that's that's all this was about you just happen to get the sexy pick with travis and kevin so i think that'll be just an indictment on them and the changes that they've made and um them plugging in the holes that they need to passion the tire up and just hitting the rubber on the road so i'm i will i will give it to jsu in um in that respect yeah uh you know for me i'm going to give it to jackson state because you know it, when you have a top 50 recruiting class your first year, you have the recruiting class you did this year, which I believe was top 70 or 80, somewhere in there, depending on the recruiting service you looked at. Um, For me, I, it's got to be Jackson State because, I mean, when's the last time, you know, you got so many first, first five-star to commit. Kevin Coleman would have been the highest-rated recruit. At the door, and you had Coinus Miller, and, and the list goes on and on. So I just think it's got to be Jackson State. But also in the same token, C, I'm going to say this. It exposed the teams in the SWAC that weren't doing what they were supposed to do. Mm-hmm. It exposed it, it exposed the, I mean, whoever, I don't want to call out you know, any certain school, but it exposed those teams that needed to improve really fast. And I think you're seeing all those teams take a step. The problem is, you no, know, the way I look at Coach Prime is he is he almost looks like an accelerant. Like when you're starting a fire, you spray that accelerant on and you catch everything on fire much faster than a lot of these other SWAT schools are having to go the old fashioned route and build it from the bottom, and they don't have that accelerant like a Coach Prime. So I think it's I think I think the SWAC is going to catch up. But I do think that it's just how good Jackson State is. All right, let me see. We got a we got a call on right here. All right, caller, you live. Hey, how you doing? I'm D from Houston. Hey, Blue Ray. <laughs> Kobe, how you doing? How you doing? How you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. All right, I have a, um, a comment and a question. Um, my question is, like, I know you, um, Blue, you mentioned, like, Zach Bro, and then, um, what is it? Jo- I'm saying it right, Josh, not Josh, um, Big country, I'm just saying big country for right now. And there's a host of other players who are not there yet in the spring, but that, you know, plan to get there May, June. How do you think that is going to affect them not being able to play in the spring game, not able to get those first looks? Well, the reality of the situation is, you know, kids who aren't who kids who, who aren't there in the spring, you're coming in you know, a step behind. That's just how it is. It's how it's always been. That's the unfortunate reality. Doesn't mean that they can't catch up. You know, they're not, the lead isn't going to be that insurmountable that they can't, you know, overcome the time that they've lost, you know, not being there in the spring. Um, I don't think it'll really have much impact, right? But I mean, you know, that's just the reality of the situation is you're going to come in, you're not there in the spring, so Mm -hmm. you lose some time. Um, But, you know, I think 
it, I think it won't really affect things too much if I'm being honest with you. No. And, you know, it was always going to be a thing with the early enrollee when they introduced that rule. Not every kid in high school or JUCO is on track to graduate in December. And I think it really depends more. So, you know, the kids who show up at the spring aren't, you know, quote unquote, more ready or et cetera. And I think the kids in high school nowadays have a better shot at setting up their high school schedule now to graduate in December while you have some of these transfers and JUCO guys who they don't have control over when they graduate. They can't structure their schedule to get there in the spring. So a lot of these guys don't have control over when they get there. And it's not uncommon. I mean, even with Power 5 programs, half of the recruiting class is there, half isn't. And you still have summer workouts for – multiple months you still have fall camp and i think it probably means more for you know offensive line chemistry for that position but when you're looking at wide receivers defensive ends everything like that they still studying the playbook away from the team they're still watching film they're still going through instructed workouts from the coaches so it's really and truly just how quick they bond with the teammates when they get there in you know in may or june or whenever they may arrive to campus so i don't think it'll put them at that much of a disadvantage but like co you know like c said they'll be a step behind okay that's a great point and one more question now a lot of people are mentioning you know Travis Hunter and rightly so because he's the number one player in the nation but what happens because Peyton and Beasley is, is very good as well I watched his videos and he's proven against some of those top five players that's on Georgia or Alabama he played them in high school so I'm sure politics will play a role in this, but what happens is Matavian Beasley, he steps up and he's better than Travis Hunter. What happens then? Um, well, so even even if that does happen, right, which I don't think it will, but even if that does happen, Tavion's Beasley <laughs> size <laughs> nah, you know that ain't that ain't no diss to Tavion, right? But Tavion's size, he's right. he he shouldn't be out there where Travis is anyway. Tavion is small. He does need to put weight on, right? He's an exceptional corner who is arguably more battle-tested than Travis. I will give you that, right? Because, right. you know, he's played at one of the, the top high schools in the country. But, you know, because of his size, he really shouldn't be on that outside. He should be in the slot. So if, if he does perform to the level that Travis does or, or better than him, then he gets the spot in the slot. But he's not... You know, all all this about him like taking Travis a spot or whatever, it's not gonna happen. He's still way too small. He's he's way yeah. too small. Yeah, I mean you know, that I I mean, I agree with C on that. I mean, he kind of fits into a different position, but I do like that you brought that up because I don't I think sometimes people try to rush the process, I'll call it that, where yet every okay. five star, every five star isn't gonna work out. And there are busts and there's some that go through growing pains and might emerge later in the season. So I would say this is for people not to panic if Travis gets off to a slow start mm -hmm. or Travis isn't making the impact you thought he was. Because everyone's just assuming he's going to come in and walk away with freshman of the year and lead the swack in picks, lead the swack in whatever right. you want to say he's going to be in. So I would I'd, I'd like your comment in the in the context of you know, let's also not try to put these freshman expectations at like an unreasonable level. Like he's not going to come in and just win SWAC player of the year, just offer it without any competition. If he goes through some growing pains for the first three, four, five weeks, that it's okay that you got to remember that he's still an 18 year old freshman and that we have to put that in perspective that, that he's going to make freshman mistakes. And so sometimes I feel like with these five stars, like I remember I'm an Auburn grad. I came into the same class. My freshman year, I had a class of Byron Coward, number one player in the country, defensive end he he never even he started three games from Auburn and got cut and I mean wow. it, it, he wound up at Maryland and now he's on a practice squad I think for the Patriots or something like that so it it, it happens and so I think it, that's a good point that people also have to remember that these guys are freshmen too and sometimes they, they you know like it, Travis is small in some, you know, in terms of weight. So until he puts on some weight, he might lose those one-on-one -on -one matchups that you think he's going to win. So I, I, I like your comment on that on that aspect. Okay. Well, thank you very much, guys. I, I enjoyed the show, and I'm going to let the next call come in. <laughs> thank you. Right. Thank you for your call. Thank you. And you know, like just one quick thing, like. Yeah, hey, Blue, you're right. Travis is small too, but think about how small Travis is and then look at Tavion. Like he he's not as tall, he's not as 
muscular. Like he, you know, it, it's not going to happen with him on the outside. I, it, I just don't see it. Carly, you live. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. You live, man. Yes. Okay. Uh, this is kind of off topic a little bit, and I just want to get you guys' uh, uh, opinion on it. Um, I don't know if you you've talked about it in the past, but uh, the uh, lawsuit with uh, Fred Jones against Jackson State. Could you give me your opinion on that? Um, you know, for me, you know, I said it on the live stream, you know, I still haven't really gotten to take a look at like the full documents and like, I'm not a legal guy, like I'm not a lawyer. So, uh, you know, on, like for me, I don't, I don't like to try to like, like jump over stuff that like I'm not ready for. So I won't say anything on this. I know from what I've heard from reliable sources like Dr. Cavill and things like that, that, you know, it's probably going to get settled if anything, um, but in just in terms of the whole situation, I do agree though with the comment that UAPB really got the short end of the stick there in terms of not having a game to schedule and then having to go and schedule, you know, North American University because they kind of got left out to hang by the SWAC office. But you know, in terms of the lawsuit, I don't know what's gonna happen of it. You know, I do think that the SWAC office does hold bar some responsibility. For what happened, but overall, you know, what's going to happen, I can't really say because I, I have no background in knowing how those type of things work out. Yeah, um, same here, honestly. Like, I don't like Blue, you have like a trusted source that you know, talk to you a little bit. I didn't even have that. I don't know, like, I don't like to speak on things, especially legal things that I don't really know much about. Um, I had to watch Scotty's show to really get my information, yeah. <laughs> you know, like, you feel me? I had to watch Scotty's show to get my information on what's going on with that, but you know. I will say it should count for something that Jackson State at least, you know, decided to come back. I think Scotty said that in the show that, you know, they should count for something that they at least tried to come back and, you know, give y'all one last year. Cause they didn't have to do it. You know, they gave y'all one last year uh, before they bounced, you know. But other than that, I, I really can't give you an opinion on it because I don't want to come across as ignorant. I, I know nothing about that, that situation. I, I appreciate y'all candor, man. I really do. I uh, just wanted to see what you was going to say. I watch both of you guys, and I think both of y'all do a great job. And uh, I appreciate your candor. Hey, appreciate you, man. All right, the call line is empty right now. All right, cool. Well, man, guys, listen. Um, I w w listen. Me and C both appreciate appreciate all y'all for tuning in. I mean, th this I think we hit like the highest that on this channel over two hundred something people tuned in at once. Man, just mm -hmm. insane, man. I mean, I know it's big for both of us, but listen, I can't thank CFL enough for hopping on here, man, taking some time out of his Thursday night. So, C, man, let them know one more time where to find you. Let them know anything you got coming. I know you got a big weekend ahead of you, man. I know a lot of people are yeah. excited. Yeah. Um. So. First and foremost, you can find me, of course, on the CFL podcast, right? But on social media, you can find me at C O B I O R R, Kobe or um, for every social, every major social media site. Um, also, this Saturday, I have Simi Moala, uh, the newest offensive tackle for Jackson State. He's gonna be, th he's gonna come through at six o'clock. We're gonna talk. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna talk, chop it up, get y'all so y'all can get to know him better. Sunday. Tyson Alexander, the return of Tyson Alexander. He is going to be on the podcast as well um, at 7 p.m. Sunday night. Also, next week is the start of the Shine on MEAC series. Um, I got um, players coming in from all over the MEAC, right? Mr. Ramel Harris Freeman, the corner from Delaware State, he's going to be there. Uh, players from Howard, they're going to come through. South Carolina State, it's time for the MEAC to get more love because, you know, they're, they're not really getting much attention. So, you know, I want to be one of the few people to bring light to them. So, all that's coming, man. Man, I, I, I'm pumped. Listen, I'm going to be tuning in for the Jackson State ones. And, guys, don't worry. This is going to be happening more often. Listen, now, I know we got some big plans on the way, man. Listen, we're trying to get, like, a big roundtable together. Not just three of us. We're going to get a whole crew of us together, man. But, um, guys, make sure to tune in tomorrow, man. Have a great interview. Hey, with Blue, I, I don't mean to cut you off. Hey, Mr. Ford calling in. You want to you wanna let him? Hey, man, we'll let it ride if you got a little bit of time, man.
I, I got, hey, Mr. Ford, you live, bro. I'm going to just be quick. Listen, you, you just had a lady call me and talking about uh, Travis Hunter. I just want to say to her, I watched Travis Hunter in uh, those All-Star games because I was the same way. I was trying to see what was all this about Travis Hunter. Let me tell you something. This kid is super. Uh, if he plays three years at Jackson State, I'm going to be surprised. Uh, he's definitely not going to play four years, and he's going to go. He's going to be drafted high. Uh, I don't know what your name is, Miss, but you were talking about Tra- Travis Hunter is going to turn Jackson State out. That's all I want to say. Y'all have a good night here. All Thank right, you, Mr. Ford. Ford. <laughs> man, had to, had to end it with the legend, man, Mr. Ford. But guys, man, listen, I'll be dropping an interview tomorrow. Stephen F. Austin, defensive back, Miles Hurd, two-time All-American. First team in two different conferences, and y'all can catch them in Lorman, Mississippi, week one as Stephen F. Austin travels to face all corn week one. So make sure to tune into that. Subscribe to CFL's podcast, man. Go check out his interviews this week, and I know I will. But guys, for C, for myself, and for the Blue Bloods, man, we out for right now. <laughs>